Encik, dengar tak? Encik. Dengar, dengar. Ha, dengar. Hmm. Um, Usna, can you can you add move uh, Karas to stage because I need to see whether his camera is okay. Whether her camera is okay. All right. All right, Karas, we can see you. We can hear you. Can you mention your title again? Can you mention your title again? My title of my presentation today is My Lex Myosis Flora, Methanol Extract Elevated Testosterone Level of Male but Not Premirex in Subacute Toxicity Study. Okay, in here, we have, yes, we can clear you, we can hear you very clear. In my list, we, your title is begins with S myosotiflora. Do, do you have another word in before the S myosotiflora? No. So your title S is, is S is because I can hear you say like uh, something. I'm not smite. sure. Mm. Sorry? The slide has been sent with smilex myositiflora. Okay. Smile. All right. Thank smilex. you. Yes. Thank you. Your voice is clear. Your camera is good. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we can start now. It's 10.31 a.m. already. Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone. Welcome to the oral presentation for Room 10, Pharmacology and Toxicology. My name is Ahmad Najib Mohammed. I am a postgraduate student at University of Science Malaysia and I am your MC in charge for this session today. First of all, I would like to introduce to all presenters our judge for today, Dr. Izatus Shima Tai from University Kebangsaan Malaysia. Before we start our session, I would like to remind all of the presenters regarding the instruction for oral presentations. Please mute your microphone and turn off your camera, camera during the presentation. You may only turn it on during your Q&A session. Your slide video presentation will be handled by PIC for today, which is Ms. Husna Azizul. Once your presentation has ended, please turn on your microphone and camera. And once your Q&A session has ended, please turn off back your microphone and camera. The video presentation for today is approximately 10 minutes and your Q&A session will be maximum of 5 minutes. Without further ado, we shall begin now with the first presenter. I would like to call the first presenter, Rasmaizatul Akma Binti Rosdi, participant code P04, to present her research entitled as myosotiflora methanol extract elevated testosterone level of male but not female rat in subacute toxicity study. Please enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Thank you to Chairperson, the IPES committee members, judges, and all my fellow viewer friends. My name is Rasmai Zatul Akmarusdi, and I am one of the postgraduate students from University Science Malaysia. And today I'm going to share a part of my project findings entitled Smilex Multiflora Methanol Extract Elevated Testosterone Level of Male but Not Female Rats in the Subacute Toxicity Study. 
Before that, let me introduce you to what is Smilax myositiflora. Smilax myositiflora is a monocot herbaceous plant from the Smilaceae family, genus of Smilax, and species of myositiflora. It is also been known as horny little devil, ubi jaga, kerating, manto, or akar dingin. This creeping plant grows widely in the forests of tropical climate regions in Southeast Asia, for example, in Peninsula Malaysia, Southern Thai, and Kalimantan. Traditionally, this plant is used as a male aphrodisiac, back pain or fever reliever, and as energy drink. It is also been consumed to restore vitality and libido, firming the vagina after delivery and arresting vagina discharge. True to the scientific findings of Smilax myositiflora, it was proved that the plant has the effects of aphrodisiac, synergistic, antioxidant, and anthelmintic activity. The tuber was found to have a comparable peak of protein, which is responsible to increase the expression of the male hormone level, testosterone, the 4.3 kilodalton peptide with long jack and refulsia species. Smilax myositiflora was non-toxic in in vitro study when using brine shrimp lethality test. At dose 800 mg per kg, it did not cause any toxic effect, neither on the pregnancy outcome, nor fatal malformation occurred. Despite the popularity of the plant as a fault remedy, the rates of reported study on safety and toxicity information of the plant are very minimal. The toxicological profile of the Smilax myositiflora is still unknown. Rationally, the improper safety investigation on medicinal plant can uptake the toxic substance to cause serious health hazard or illnesses to human life. Therefore, the objective of this study is to investigate the toxicity effects of Smilax myositiflora in methanol extract in vivo through acute and subacute tests. The experiment of the study was begun with the collection of tubers of Smilax myositiflora and the plant authentication. Sauslet extraction method was used to prepare the Smilax myositiflora methanol extract or SMME using the methanol at its solvent. The SMME then was subjected to acute and subacute test to investigate the respective parameters. Limit test was conducted where the highest dose was used in both tests after referring to the previous studies. Finally, the statistical analysis was performed using the unpaired t-test to evaluate the data. This animal ethic approval was gained from the animal ethic community of University of Science Malaysia. For the acute test, five female rats, which were at 8 to 10 weeks old, healthy, nulliparous, and non-pregnant, were given a single oral administration of SMME at 2,000 and 5,000 mg per kg and were monitored for toxicity signs and possible mortality for over a period of 24 hours until 14 days as according to OECD guideline number 425. In the subacute toxicity test, rates of post sex with particular criteria were administered at the highest dose, 1,000 mg per kg, for 28 days and were daily monitored for any changes as according to the OECD guideline number 407. Rats were firstly acclimatized for five to seven days prior to this experiment. As the result, no mortality or adverse effect on the rats in both tests were observed. No significant changes in general appearance or behavioral pattern were noted till the end of the test days. Normal weight gain and relative body weight were observed in the treated and the control group. SMME has significantly reduced the aspartate aminotransferase enzyme AST in the treated subacute male rats. It is also significantly increased the triglyceride in treated females in the subacute test. The elevated testosterone level was only acute and significant in the treated male but not in female rats in the subacute. 
For histological analysis of liver, kidney, and testes, no sign of toxicity such as necrosis, inflammation by inflammatory cells, or changes in nucleus and cytoplasmic features were observed in rats of control and treated groups of subacute test. In addition, the spermatogenesis process was found normal in both male groups. Figure 1 shows the histological result under magnification of 20 times from subacute toxicity test where all tissues display normal architecture and morphologies. The present study evaluated the toxicological profile of Smilax myosotiflora in methanol extract form through in vivo acute and subacute toxicity studies as according to OECD guideline number 425 and 407. The LD50 of SMME was found to be greater than 5,000 mg per kg as it did not give any mortality or any toxicity effects to the rats. LD50 through acute toxicity tests allow the SME to be ranked and classified according to the globally harmonized system, GHAs, as category 5, which is safe. In the subacute test, even though SMME reduced the level of AST among treated male, apparently it helped to come back to fall under the normal range level compared to the control group, which much more higher. High AST enzyme in the blood is actually the sign of damage caused by ischemic or toxic. The normal range of AST level in rats is between 50 to 150 IU per liter. The significant increase of testosterone level in male but not in female rats in subacute tests mature in specific pathway related to sexuality, for example, the reproductive system. Besides central effects, testosterone has been shown to act peripherally by facilitating the nitrogen neurotransmission, accentuating nitric oxide synthase activity and nitric oxide release in the carbonosa all of which contribute toward panel erection. SMME has also significantly increased the triglyceride in treated compared to the control re uh, female group. Same trend but not significant also can be seen in triglyceride of male tre uh, subacute treated group. Triglycerides store unused calories and provide your body with energy to build cells, muscle, and certain hormones. However, too high triglyceride may contribute to hardening of the arteries or thickening of the artery walls, which increases the risk of stroke, heart attack, and heart disease. For the conclusion, the SMME is relatively safe as its median lethality dose was greater than 5,000 mg per kg. Smilex myositiflora might be able to help in male sexual dysfunction problem. However, more studies to identify the active compound of aphrodisiac effect and its mechanism of action should be conducted to affirm the current findings. This study also show that safety testing with Scientific validation are a prerequisite not only for exploring the potential, efficacy, safety, and toxicity of the plant. In addition, it is also crucial for commercial exploitation and narrowing the international knowledge barrier. Here are my references. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Rasmajatul Akma, for the presentation. You may turn, you may now turn on your camera and unmute your microphone. Okay, we shall have Q and A session. Over to you, Doctor Izatul Shim. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, uh, Rasmaiza. Okay, a very nice and very clear presentation. Congratulations. Okay, um, I just want to ask you, why did you use methanol in your extraction? Well, uh, uh, thank you for the question, Doctor. Uh, well, actually, uh, this this study, my study is actually based on the previous study that have been done. Um, in our same group that um, when we compare uh, methanol and normally people will use aqueous, methanol mm -hmm. seems to be more significant in some parts of uh, parameters which 
involved in reproductive system of male. See. Yes. In okay. fact, uh, uh, in fact, doctor, we found that uh, smilex multiflora in aqueous extract is not easy to be handled. So sometimes we believe that because of the attitude is like that, uh, we might afraid that there is compound that has been degraded uh, all the way of the experiment. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so I found that from your presentation, I can see that the AST level is increased in the control rats, right? So do you Correct. have an idea what why what 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 is happening? Why did the control rat have the high AST level? I um I believe because uh the treatment is same, mm -hmm. but I believe uh it's like something that coming from um water consumption daily because we just give uh the pipe water that normal okay. that normal practice that uh, we've done mm -hmm. all this one yeah but it seems like um having the smile lights it mm -hmm. can protect some parts of um ice cream or toxicity that caused by other factors maybe from the water okay uh so uh you you mentioned that the testosterone level is high in male rats right all right doctor okay mm -hmm. So how high is high? Is it it's still in a normal value or it's more than normal value? Did you compare with the normal value? Um, I we did compare with previous um previous studies that have done in mm -hmm. our group and also the previous um yeah uh it's actually the increment is actually comparable mm -hmm. with the previous studies. Um, but for in the, apparently the increment of testosterone is actually slightly higher compared to the normal testosterone for the normal uh, rats. But it, okay. it still can, can consider safe uh, based on the previous experience, at uh, previous uh, studies, previous findings, yes. Okay. All right. How do you determine the dose for subacute toxicity? You are using 1,000, right? Right. Yes. Uh, how do you determine it? uh it is also from the uh, we also refer to the uh, previous studies where um we can see that among 200 400 and 800 uh, 800 from the previous study seems to be safer compared to 400 in some part of the parameter but at the same time also proved to um show some of the parameters that we looking for the, for that part so after discussing with um our ethical committee and they accept to have our subacute uh, uh, to have our subacute at the highest dose so that um this can be the uh, benchmark for the rest of smilex multiflora study for uh, for the next coming years Okay, then why did you choose only uh, female rats in the acute toxicity study? Because uh, for in, the, in acute toxicity study, as according to the OECD guideline 4 to 5, mm -hmm. even though um, we can see that my study is actually more to a male purpose or a male system, but mm -hmm. as the female uh, actually more sensitive in some parts. So we decided to go for um, only female in subacute to find out um, the sensitivity of the smilex multiflora, which is more effective in uh, determining the acute effects of uh, smilex multiflora. Uh, it, uh, in addition, doctor, this is actually concerning to the welfare of the, uh, of the rats instead of using both uh, the result is sufficient only using with the only female rats in the study all right thank you mr najib i pass back to you thank, thank you Rasmus, sir. thank you dr zatus and madam ras for the, for the presentation um next i'm going to invite second presenter for today Madam Antisa Yassin Abdul Kite 
to present her research entitled Minus Cycling Improve Motion and Reduce Microglial Activation in LPS Induced Alzheimer Disease Right Model. Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone, my name is Intasar. I want to present my data in titles of minocycline reduces microglial activation and improves the commotion in lipopolysaccharides induced Alzheimer disease rates model. This is the guidelines of the study. Alzheimer disease is the leading cause of dementia in elderly population and affecting approximately 7 million people worldwide. Expected to double every 20 years, where in 2030 expected to reach 8, uh, 8 million, 11, uh, 11 million in 2040 and 12 million in 2050. Alzheimer's disease is predicted to affect one in every 85 people globally by 2050 unless significant breakthrough in treatment will develop. Several theories were proposed to explain the causes of Alzheimer's disease, but so far no one theory can adequately explain all aspects of the disease. The precise mechanisms for Alzheimer disease progression are also unclear. Thus, lack of understanding the causes of Alzheimer disease is a major problem in finding appropriate treatments. Only for drugs available for Alzheimer's disease, Dombezil, Galantamine, Rivastigmine, and Nimantine that are considered as a symptomatic treatment for Alzheimer disease. And no new drugs have been marketed for nearly 20 years. Based on compelling evidence implicating glial cell mediated inflammation and Alzheimer's disease, that is the major contributor of neurodegenerative process, numerous studies have explored the possibility of using anti inflammatory drugs to prevent and or help the neurodegeneration and improve neurological function. Minocycline is a microglial activation inhibitor and possesses anti inflammatory properties and has shown a neuroprotective effect. The rationale of this study, the newest strategy in Alzheimer's disease is the control of resistant glial cell activation, which leads to cellular dysfunctions and neuroinflammation. However, the role of, the role of glial cell activation, especially microglial cells in, in molecular mechanisms of LBS-induced cognitive impairment, one of type of Alzheimer's disease rats model is still not clear. So this study was conducted with the objective to determine the effects of LBS injection on expression of microglial cell and locomotion, and to determine the effects of cycling treatment on expression of microglial cells and locomotion in LBS-induced Alzheimer's disease rates model, in comparison to clinically approved and methyl aspartic receptor antagonist named Mimentin. This is the methodology of the study, adult Merspirac Dalirat, divided into five groups. Control LBS, then three LBS groups with treatment. The treatment was given from day one until day four. The treatment was minocycline 25 milligram per kg, minocycline 50 milligram per kg, and minocycline 10 milligram per kg. LBS was injected at a dose of five milligram per kg. Then the treatment was continued from day six until day 14. From day 15 until day 19, open field test was conducted. On day 20, rats were sacrificed and the cortices and hypocombi were collected for part of the stem block and immune histochemistry analysis. The data analyzed using SBS version 24. This is the experimental timeline. This is the open field test. Briefly, this apparatus divided into 25 squares. We put the rats in the middle and we let the rats to explore the arena. We calculate the total distance, the speeds, and the line crossing of the rats. For the results of urban field test, we have shown that LBS group showed decrease the total distance and the speed and the number of line crossing, while minocycline at the dose of 50 and 25 in group the total distance and the mean speed and total number of line crossing, better effects of has shown in minocycline in the rats injected with minocycline 50 than minocycline 25 in comparison to nimentin. For immune histochemistry, first we have shown the cerebral cortex. In LBS group, like shown here, 
there, there was increased number of IBA positive microglial cell that reduced with minocycline treatment 25 and 50. For hippocampus, first region of CA1, LBS group has shown increased number of IBA positive microglial cell, while minocycline at both dose reduced number of IBA positive microglial cell. For CA2 region, also in LBS group, increased number of microglial cell that reduced with minocycline treatment at both doses. CA3 region, same, increased number of microglial cell in LBS group that reduced with treatment. DG region, same, increased the number of positive IBA microglial cell that was reduced with minocycline treatment. In the highland region, this is the highland region, increased number of IBA positive microglial cell that reduced with minocycline treatment. We have shown that all, all in all region of hippocampus and in the cortex, the effects of minocycline 50 in reducing the number of IBA positive microglial cell um, was better than minocycline 25 in comparison to minocycline. For western blood of hippocampus and cortex, there was increased density of IBA protein in LBS group and reduced the density of protein in minocycline groups in comparison to memantine. LBS injection activates microglial cells in the cortex and hippocampus and induces locomotion deficit, deficit possibly due to inflammatory oxidative and, um, oxidative and amyloid pathway stimulation. This coincides with previous studies that have found behavioral impairment and microgliosis in Alzheimer's disease rats model. Minocycline treatments reduce microglial cell activation and improve locomotion, possibly due to its anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and anti-amyloid properties, similar with memantine. This effects of minocycline was dependent. The higher the dose, the more protective effect. In summary, LBS injection, 5 mg per kg once, induce microgliosis and locomotion, and minocycline treatment daily for two weeks ameliorated these effects. In adult male spread, Rats model of Alzheimer's disease. So, in conclusion, minocycline treatment attenuates the neurological deficit caused by LBS injection and may be used as a preventive therapeutic agent to treat Alzheimer's disease. Thank you for the presentation, Madam Antisar. You may now turn on your camera and unmute your microphone. We shall proceed with the Q&A session for that. Over <laughs> to you, Dr. Zatos. Right, thank you. Okay, Madam Antisar, all right. Uh, a very good and very nice presentation. Okay, um, you are doing the induced the Alzheimer with LPS, right? Lipopolysaccharide. Yes. Okay, yes. can you explain to me how the mechanism of LPS can induce uh, Alzheimer disease in the rats? Uh, first, we have to know that uh, LBS is uh, called endotoxin found in the membrane of gram-negative bacteria. Uh, previous studies have shown that uh, LBS injection induces uh, inflammatory pathway, either direct or indirect. Uh, direct by uh, activation of TLR4 uh, necrotic factor KB pathway or indirect by activation of immunity that activate the inflammatory pathway. This activation will result in activation of microglial cell uh, that induce amyloid deposition. The amyloid deposition in the brain uh, induce the characteristic feature of Alzheimer's disease. Thank okay. You. All right. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to replace the memantine actually for your purpose of your research? Do you want to replace the memantine? Uh, Keep getting to to replace the mementine because in this it study is... we use uh, mementine uh, as a positive control. Mm -hmm. Mementine already approved more than three years ago, but it is symptomatic treatment for Alzheimer's disease. We we use it as a positive control. We use our medication, uh, minocycline twenty five and fifty milligram per kg, uh, to compare it with already approved drug. Okay. Um... So uh, you are not targeting to replace, in, replace the memantine? Uh, 
No, we, we are targeting to induce a therapeutic treatment because memantine is only symptomatic treatment. Okay. All right. Uh, so can you just explain what are the side effects of the memantine? Uh, the side effects, um, maybe uh, gastrointestinal symptoms and some uh, neurological symptoms. All right. Okay. So do you give the uh, monocycline alone to the rats? I mean, uh, for the control rats that you're not given any, you not induce any no. albumins? For control rats, we give them only normal saline. Okay, so you're not looking the 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 effects of this uh minocycline alone to the, the to the control rats. You're not given that, right? No. Okay. Um. So your um uh, research design is it treatment or pretreatment? We preventive treatment and therapeutic treatment because uh preventive because we give it before the exposure to LBS. Then we continue after we give to uh LBS. So it's preventive therapeutic. I see. You give you give the uh, you give the minocycline first, and then you induce the LPS. Yes, we give it three days before LPS injection. All right. Then we continue two weeks after LPS injection. So it's preventive therapeutic at the okay. same time. Okay. All right. Uh, from your finding, what is the base the best dose? Twenty five uh, or fifty. Fifty milligram per kg is better uh, dose because uh, we have shown that uh, minocycline uh, fifty milligram induced. Uh, reduce uh, improve uh, neurological function and reduce microglial activation better than 20, minus, minus a clean, uh, 25 milligram per kg. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Najib, I pass back to you. Thank you, Dr. Izatus and Madam Antisa. You may now uh, turn off your camera and mute your microphone. Our next presenter, third presenter for today is Nurul Ajila Muhammad Khair from University Science Malaysia, she will be presenting her research entitled Effects of COM2 on Nociceptive Behavior Responses and Inflammatory Parameters in Complete Fluence Adjuvant Induced Chronic Polyarthritic Rats. Hi, I'm Ajila from USM. I'll be presenting our research work entitled Effects of COM2 on Nociceptive Behavior Responses and Inflammatory Parameters in Complete Front and Juvenile Induced Chronic Polyarthritic Rats. So I would like to notify that the animal use in our study was developed to mimic human rheumatoid arthritis condition. So when I mention human rheumatoid arthritis or RA, the common thing that probably pop up in your mind right now is the joint, okay? Because this disease affects the joint. So in our research work, we focus on RA-related pain because it has been identified as one of the most dominant symptoms by patients. So RA pain manifests as reduced pain threshold and increase in pain sensitivity to the uh, inflamed joint and surprisingly also in the non-inflamed joint. So this suggests there is an abnormal uh, abnormalities to the pain signals at the central levels. Therefore, relieving the pain is one of the top priority to improve the quality of health. Therefore, we're exploring this p 2 export receptor that has been suggested to be to play a role in RA pathogenesis. So this receptor is one of the many purinergic receptors that widely expressed in both neurons and glial cells, and it, it will be activated upon ATP binding. So when it's being activated, it will activate episodes of biochemical pathway, in turn release inflammatory and pain mediators results in pain hypersensitivity. This we utilizing COM2 in the study as growing evidence suggests that COM2 is an effective antagonist toward this receptor supporting by numbers of uh, articles on its pharmacological effects and in the context of pain com significantly reduce the two main dominant symptoms in chronic pain known as allodynia and hyperotesia. All right, so to date, there has been limited work exploring the effects of COM2 as a P2 export antagonist on RA pain and inflammation. 
conditions. So generally, you wanted to assess the COM2 effect on pain or nociceptive behavior response, such as mobility, tactile allodynia, and thermal hyperalgesia, and we also wanted to see on edema. Right. So the study employed 48 male rats, equally divided into four groups, and we inject the CFA on day zero generally, and then we start the treatments on day 16 for seven days, and we sacrifice the rats on day 24. Okay, to develop the uh, arthritic models, we inject CFA at the right ball of the rats, or the ipsi lateral ball. We also assess the body weight for every three days throughout the experiment, and then we also measure the ankle joint diameter at both uh, joints. And then for mobility, we assess the physical performance of the rat. So we utilize two scoring system for standing and walking. So from here, you can see a higher, a high score indicate reduced mobility, right? Next is tactile allodynia using the von Frey test. So this test will measure the mechanical withdrawal threshold in which we introduce a mechanical stimulus to the pore of the rat. So when the rats withdraw from it, so this device will show you the value of the threshold in response to mechanical stimulus. For optimal hyperalgesia using the hot plate test, it will assess and provide you the information about the thermal withdrawal threshold when we introduce the rat with thermal stimulus. So all data analyzed using statistical graphite prism, right? And then for the body weight changes, as you can see here, all the CFA induced arthritic rat gain less weight compared to the normal control group. Right? So changes in body weight of rats are important indicator for RA inflammations. Reductions of it indicate disease progressions, while re increase of it indicate recovery. Our data is in accordance with our a complication known as rheumatoid cachexia, where the rat uh, experience loss of muscle tissue. And it also may occur due to deficiency of nutrient absorption through the intestine due to severity of the inflammation. For changes in ankle joint diameter, right side and the left side, right? Um, on day zero, there were no significant changes occur. Okay, on day 15, you can see significant uh, developments of edema, right? And on day 23, we can see a rat treated with COM2 showed a decreased trend only, but not significant, right? So the photographs here showing you the time timelines of the uh, edema development. So for photo A, uh, absence of inflammation. Photo B, we can see the visible inflammation at the right pore or the C lateral pore. And photo C showing you the progressions with the inflammation to the left pore. Right. So the injections of the CFA in our work does uh, produce inflammation. In regards to the COM2 treatment, uh, why is it just a decreased trend? Okay, suggested by Havera that COM2 might be more significantly effects in more severe conditions such as neuropathic pain model. Okay, for mobility, um, for standing and walking, on day zero, there were no significant differences. And on day 15, uh, we can see all CFA-induced arthritic rats uh, increase in score means reduce in mobility for standing and walking, right? So on day 23, uh, we can see that the COM2 treatment somewhat improved the mobility, especially at the, on the standing score, okay? So all the CFA arthritic rats uh, having a reduction of mobility might be due to activations of polymorphonuclear cells and generations of free radicals that cause uh, motor dysfunction and for COM2, it possibly attenuate the uh, certain pain pathway so that it can improve the mobility but we need to study more okay for tactile allodynia on ipsilateral and contra day zero again no significant differences on day 15 we can see that 
uh, there's been in a decrease in mechanical threshold means more pain uh, to the uh, to all CFA induced uh, arthritic rats and on day on day 23 come to somewhat increase the mechanical thresholds key and so the allodynia occurs when there's changes, central changes mediated by activations of microglia cells via activations of P2X4 receptor. So COM2 attenuate this by inhibiting the P2X4R. And for thermal hyperalgesia, um, on day zero, there were no significant differences. On day 15, we can see that there's been decrease in Thermal withdrawal threshold for all CFA in this group, indicating hyperalgesia. And for day 23, come to somewhat attenuate the hyperalgesia. Okay. So, study by AB stated that with the CFA injection, there will be P2X4R uh, generations that prolong the occurrence of inflammation. Not just that, when we inject CFA, there will be rapid uptake of the adjuvant by the dendritic cell that cause phagocytosis and secretions of cytokines. So how come to attenuate this? Is by inhibiting the release of cytokines. Thus, in conclusion, the arthritic rats induced by CFA in our work does demonstrate development of thermal hyperalgesia tactile allodynia and reduced mobility throughout the experiment. And we do see the development of inflammatory joint edema at both pores. And the seven days of administration of COM2 um, somewhat reduced the tactile allodynia and a thermal hyperalgesia means it reduced the hypersensitivity and it increased the mobility but not reducing the inflammatory joint edema. So the antinociceptive activities of COM2 are possibly contributed by the attenuations of P2X4R. It can be on central or peripheral, it can be both. All right. So these are my questions. Okay, I would like to thank uh, USM and all my supervisors and uh, physiologists, uh, physiologist staff, and not to forget uh, animal and research center staff. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Nurul, for the presentation. We shall proceed with the Q&A session now. Over to you, Dr. Izatus. Okay, ma'am, thank you. Okay, uh, Nurul Ajila, huh? okay, uh, very nice. Congratulations on your presentation. Okay, um, uh, uh, my first question is, I want to know, is COM2, is it same with carbon monoxide? All right, uh, thank you, Doctor, for your question. Um, good day, everyone. So, uh, carbon monoxide releasing molecule, yes, uh, as the name implies, it is actually derived from CO gas, mm -hmm. carbon monoxide gas. And when we talk about carbon monoxide gas, of course, there will be a great dispute uh, about this because carbon monoxide, uh, commonly known as a silent killer, that yeah. kills, that we can, we can hear a lot of cases that kills a lot of people over the years. But the cause that we are talking about is we take the CO and mm -hmm. bind it to a um, metal, transition metal, for the COM2 to the ruthenium uh, com compound mm -hmm. so that it can be safer to be introduced into the human body means we introduce the CO in a controlled manner inside the body. Okay, all right. Uh, so meaning that you give the COM2 in the safe, uh, the safe uh, molecules, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, I want to know what are the dose that you use for COM2? Uh, 20 microgram. 20 microgram. Okay, how do you apply the COM2 to the to the rats? Okay, uh, uh, this COM2 uh, introduced through uh, integral route of administration. So we dilute uh, the COM2 in a normal saline mm -hmm. and we will use around, we inject around 0. 0. 0.5 ml 
using one cc uh, shrink at the okay. back or at the lumbar of the ribs, lumbar regions okay. of the ribs. How do you determine the dose? Uh, the dose uh, originally we the dose uh, is actually uh, derived from the previous study that also uh, studying the chronic pains uh, inside the rat using the COM2. So we mm -hmm. took uh, several range of doses from previous mm -hmm. study and we perform our own pilot study. So we have three different ranges of doses, 20, mm -hmm. uh, uh, 20, 50 and 80. And what we get from the pilot study is the lowest dose and the safest one would be 20 because if you refer to 80 dose uh, dosage, 80 microgram cause uh, what do you call that? more to dysfunction to the rat. So we need to choose uh, the safest one, which is 20. Okay. All right. Uh, what do you mean by the, the, the statement in your conclusion? There is no anti-inflammatory, uh, not in reducing the anti-inflammation. Mm -hmm. can, can you explain about it? Okay. Uh, based on the result, we can see that the right sides of the joint were uh, significant. Uh, the results of the changes in joint diameter at the right side is actually reduced uh, well. Uh, but sorry, is it does reduce at the right side, but uh, on the left side it is reduced, but it is not significant. What we conclude is it does have anti-inflammatory effect, but very, very extremely minimal. And we postulated that this happened because the CO that we give might activate less heme oxygenase 1. Mm -hmm. uh, heme oxygenase 1 is the enzyme that, you know, uh, that causes the production of PO because HO1 is responsible uh, as a potent anti-inflammatory, while HO2 Heme oxygen is to act as a potent anti nociceptive. That that is mm. what we postulate. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nurul Ajila. Go, uh, I thank give back to Mr. Najib. Thank you. Dr. Thank you, Dr. Zatus and Madam Nurul Ajila. Now we shall have our last presenter for today by Ain Sabrina Mohammad No from University of Science Malaysia. She will be presenting her research entitled Effects of Ifan Prodil on Pain and Inflammatory Parameters in Complete Fluence Adjuvant Induced Chronic Polyarthritic Male Rats. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the video presentation. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, respected judges, and all of the members of the house. Welcome to the International Postgraduate e Symposium 2021 in the theme of Frontiers in Medical and Health Sciences. First of all, I would like to thank the organizer for organizing this conference. My name is Ain Sabrina Momano, one of the presenters for today's conference. I am a Master of Science student in Medical Physiology from School of Medical Science Faculty, University of Science Malaysia, Health Science Campus, Kelantan. I used to speak about chronic polyarthritic population worldwide, so here I am today to present to all of you about my research project entitled Effects of iPhone Podil on Pain and Inflammatory Parameters in Complete France Adjuvant Induced Chronic Polyarthritic Male Rats. Do you know what is chronic arthritis and how serious do rheumatoid arthritis affect our population, especially in Malaysia? Rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, is one of a chronic inflammatory systemic autoimmune disease that is characterized by synovial membrane inflammation, swelling, autoantibody production, and cartilage and bone destruction, which affected approximately 1% of the world population. According to Barber et al. 2017, women had a higher prevalence compared to the men. Inflammation is an essential process that helps the body respond to and heal an injury, but it also activates nerves and causes nociceptive pain. While pain is the primary complaint and usually described as chronic in nature, but with flare-ups in between, leading to fatigue, psychological disturbance, and poor quality of life. For chronic polyarthritis induced, 
IUCFA or complete fronts are given to develop inflammation and edema that mimic skin rheumatoid arthritis. CFA is based on water in all emulsions composed of kill mycobacterium butyricum, which is dissolved in mineral oil. Many researchers believe CFA in use can mimic the chronic polyarthritis diseases, especially RA. CFA was widely injected in a sub or intermediate way of rats to induce rheumatoid inflammation equivalent to arthritis. The approaches can also be different, either via inoculation of knee, limb, steel, or hempo. Thus, for my study, I use 100 microlit equivalent to 10 mg per mil of CFA inject intradermally into the right hem metatarsal foot pad of the rat under isoferrin anesthetization. Iphen Prodil is a non-competitive antagonist of an R2B containing an MDA receptors, which is reported to be effectively in suppressing an R2B subunit containing an MDA receptors. Key roles of an R2B subunit is reported to be highly implicated in the modulation of learning, memory processing, feeding behavior, and most importantly, modulation the pain perception. Iphen Prodil has shown effectiveness as an anti nociceptive drug in several models of pain and inflammation. Therefore, I prepare iPhone Prodil in two doses, which is 0.5 and 1.0 microgram per microlit, in order to determine the effects of iPhone Prodil on pain and inflammatory parameters in rat model of CFA induced chronic polyarthritic mimicking rheumatoid arthritis. Formatted, 40 Sprout Jolly male rats were allocated into five different groups consisting control, arthritic, SD groups, and iPhone Prodil on 0.5 and 1.0 microgram per microlit. CFA injection were given on day 0 at the right hand paw, while control group were injected normal saline 0.9%. Ankle joint measurement, pain behavior test, including warm fresh and hot plate test, were recorded on day 0, 15, and 23. Meanwhile, on day 16 to 22, supposed to be treatment week within the 7 days, the treatment were given according to the group intrinsically. On day 23, sacrifice the rat and spinal cord on L4 and L5 section was collected for ELISA analysis. Ipsilateral hempo, especially on inject site, was taken for his two pathological examinations. And data analysis by using one-way ANOVA with post hoc bonfroni test or two-way repeated measures ANOVA with post hoc to key test. Tactile allodynia or wound prey test. The rats were placed on the wire mesh floor separated by compartments and acclimatized for 15 minutes prior to the experimentation. The pore withdrawal threshold was measured by applying the wound prey microfilament with gradual increasing force was given at the midline of the pore to avoid less sensitive foot pad. The stimulus was given for three times on the right hand pore. The average value was measured and recorded. Thermal hypoalgesia or hot plate test was evaluated in the rat immediately after one free test was performed using a hot plate algesia meter. The hot plate was heated at a constant temperature of 52.6 degrees Celsius. The cutoff time was set at 45 seconds, following which the animal was removed from the hot plate to prevent tissue damage. The latency in response to hind polyc, back polyc, or hop from the onset of stimulation was recorded. The animal was immediately removed from the hot plate analgesia meter after the test. In theoretical treatment, the direct intratical administration of the treatment was performed following method by Lou and Smishko. The rats were initially anesthetized with isoflurane using an anesthesia machine. During anesthetic state, the rats were removed and shaved at the back of the body. The area between L5 and L6 spinous process were used as the skin puncture site in which this area corresponds to the cauda equina. The vertical puncture of a 30G needle connect to one male shrink was injected with specific dose according to particular groups. As a result and discussion, for pain behavior parameters including the warfare and hot plate test, 
shown the group receiving iPhone produce 0.5 microgram per microlit showed significant increase in thermal and tactile threshold in hot plate and warm plate tests compared to control arthritis and control group on day 23. The increased pore withdrawal and thermal withdrawal threshold in one fray and hot plate test indicate the decrease in mechanical and thermal sensitivity of sensitivity of the hand pore after treatment given. For ankle joint diameter and ankle joint circumference, the group receiving iPhone product 0.5 microgram per microlit shown significant reduction in ankle joint edema compared to control arthritic rats on day 23. For nociceptive parameters result, including TNF-alpha and NR2B concentration, the level of TNF-alpha and NR2B concentration were significantly reduced in the spinal cord of iPhone prodil with 0.5 microgram per microlit compared to the all groups. iPhone prodil possibly suppresses the pain transmission in the spinal cord by attenuating the descending excitatory influences. It is also agreed by Chis et al. that iPhone prodil might block the supraspinal side or if such descending excitatory processes include the spinal and MDA receptors, iPhone prodil could specifically reduce the descending facilitation by inhibiting the NR2B containing receptors in the spinal cord. For inflammatory parameters, after staining the slide, the right hand pore tissue sections were observed and photographed using an image analyzer microscope at 200 magnification. It was discovered that inflammatory cell infiltration in the hand pore tissue of chronic polyarthritic rats indicates that iPhone product 0.5 and SD group shown the mildest of inflammatory cell infiltration, while iPhone product 1.0 shown in moderate and as expected. A trichic group shown the most severe inflammation with the extensive cell infiltration. As a conclusion, iPhone prodil, especially at 0.5 microgram per microlit, is suggested to be effective in reducing pain and inflammation in chronic polyarthritic rat, and its effects are comparable to sodium diclofenac. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Ayn, for the presentation. We shall proceed with the Q&A session now. Over to you again, Dr. Isatius. Thank you. Okay, uh, very good, Ayn, Sabrina. Very nice presentation. Okay, uh, thank uh, you. I, I want to know, uh, how do you determine the dose of 0 0.5 and 1.0 of uh, iPhone Pro deal? Oh, okay, thank you for the question, Doctor. Uh, I determine the dose of 0 0.5 and 1.0 of iPhone Pro D. Uh, according to the, a few journal have done this test before, but seems like uh, they can find the effective doses that can uh, use for inflammatory, uh, for especially for rheumatoid arthritis. That's why I'm continue to proceed this experiment by doing the same dose again. And that what I can find is 0 0.5 microgram per microlit is more comparable compared to 1.0. So, so why from, from your finding, you can see that 0 0.5 is the best dose, right? Compared yes. to 1.0. Can, can you explain is why? It shows like less concentration is more, is, is more effective compared to the high concentration. Uh, yes, doctor, because what I can see uh, what I found from my experiment, even I'm using 1.0 microgram per microlit, that's mm -hmm. not uh, compromising that high concentration or high dose can give more effective for reducing inflammation. Because the more, um, I need to study more about this, but what I know, uh, the increased dose of the iPhone product can almost lead to a uh, toxicity uh, mm. like that doctor. so we can use a uh, uh, higher dose of iphone protein okay i see okay from your presentation i heard that uh you you after you do the uh, bone free test you immediately 
uh, put the rats on the hot plate, right? Yes. Why is it, why is it must immediately? Uh, because they already sense the sensitivity. Mm -hmm. If we delay the duration, they the sensitivity of the of the place that I already uh give. I mean through the microfilament from the warm frame. Mm -hmm. They lose the sensitivity and maybe uh do bias for the hot plate because hot plate uh like give heat when when the heat of the hot plate uh can give directly uh, increase the sensitivity from the sensitivity touch <laughs> what can i say <laughs> <laughs> okay all right <laughs> okay uh so um i want to ask you uh regarding your um uh, suggestion or maybe you can postulate uh, what are the mechanism of action of this uh, iphone pro deal on uh, treatment of the ra oh uh iphone pro deal is one of uh, an mda antagonist receptor hmm? that inhibit the uh, receptor that containing the nr2b subunit nr2b subunit also can uh, reduce inflammation uh, according to the previous journal they also used for the nociceptive inflammation and also, uh, what do you call? Uh, oh, sorry, doctor, I don't remember. But uh, Evan Brody uh, is still going to uh, be in the antenna for the inflammation, but the actual result is not found yet. So I must yeah. further do the experimentation to find the exact dose and also to to novel the iPhone product. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ain Sabrina. Good luck. Okay, I'll pass back thank to you. you. Thank you, Dr. Izatus and Madam Ain for the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our session for today. Um, I would like to thank all presenters for sharing your research with us. I personally learned a lot about the aphrodisiac, uh, Alzheimer, and also the arthritis. Your, I believe your time and effort you contribute means a lot to the to the scientific world where you have to where you have filled the gap knowledge, and also a special acknowledgement to Dr. Izatus Shima for evaluating the research for today. I learned a lot from the question that you you gave to the participants, and I I think everyone is doing well. Great job to everyone for completing your presentation and answer the question very well. So um, before we end this session, I would like to invite all the participants and also judge Dr. Izatu Shima to switch on the camera for photography session. Hi, Dr. Dr. Izumi is here. Dr. Izumi, do you mind to join us for a photography session? It's okay, Najib. Uh, go on. You proceed. I, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not ready for for it. Eh? Thank okay. you. Husna, what about you, Husna? Okay, Karas, are you there? We couldn't see you. We can only see your background. I don't so know what's wrong with my background. laptop. So, I believe it would be better to have you rather than the background. I wish. Why don't you remove the background?
Aras, are you okay? Okay, let us proceed first. Uh. Guys, okay, everyone ready? Open your eyes and smile. Okay, I'm going to count. count. One, two, three. Okay, sorry, yeah, again. One, two, three. Smile. All right, I'm going to check the picture. Okay, everything is good. Thank you, everyone. Uh, before you leave the, this room, I would like to remind all participants, you are required to join us back at 2.30 p.m. for plenary speech by Associate Professor Dr. Maizan Mohamed and followed by closing remarks and prize giving ceremony. Also, we kindly request you to fill in the feedback form via the link provided in the chat box. Thank you.